And, um, you know, we began this training the first week, if you remember, we, we did this practice, um, may it arise. And we, this practice is, is designed in a way to be open for the facilitator to explore different qualities of heart or mind, um, especially the particular qualities of the open heart that we're looking to cultivate. So there's a creative component in the way that that's framed. May it arise where it could be, could really be uh, any number of things. May loving awareness arise, may freedom arise, may joy arise. I mean, I think the main thing is usually we're looking at to, to, for something positive to arise uh, when we're talking about cultivating the open heart. And then of course, it doesn't mean that's all that does arise. Um, difficulty arises. And then we say, oh, may loving awareness arise. And, you know, we can, we can aspire toward being able to hold the difficulty actually with loving awareness. So, so that, that's kind of the spirit of the may it arise practice. And this practice that I want to share today uh, is very similar, except it's a different way of, of practicing. So instead of a, uh, of a meta practice where we have this sort of wish or aspiration, you know, we're inclining the mind toward opening the heart here. Um, this is an inquiry practice and inquiry to me is a different approach to meditation in that um, we use a question as a prompt for discovery, for deepening into um, this process of, of being curious and learning essentially. And um, the name of this practice kind of from a, more of like a 30,000 foot view, like a big picture view is what is it? What is it? And, and, and it's, it's formulated that way because there are just like with may it arise where you might wish for many different kinds of qualities or uh, different states of heart and mind to be cultivated here. We could really inquire into any number of different aspects of experience and become curious about them and explore them uh, using a question and using a really simple question, you know, what is it? What is it? And the it could be any number of things here as well. Um, today, I wanted to use love as the it to explore what is love. Um, but you could imagine, you know, taking anything that you might be curious about or confused about, or just want to know more about, about your own experience, you know, what is mind? One of my favorites is what is meditation? You know, what is this thing that I've been practicing for how many ever years it's been? You know, what is it? Um, what is compassion? What is loving awareness? What is metta? What is this? That's one of the classic Zen questions. You know, what is this? Um, some people, that's all they practice uh, for decades. It's just that working with that single question. What is this? Um, so we're going to uh, give ourselves the luxury to explore more than this. Uh, of course, what we're exploring is all part of this, but different shades and aspects of, of this. Um, so here, the question, what is love, is meant to be a continued exploration of the central theme of this training as it's been um, exploring the open heart and heartfulness. And this is an important question for me. This is one of the first inquiry questions that I took up on, on intensive retreat and worked with ongoingly. So I, I have, there's a special place um, in, in my practice, in my heart for this, for this particular inquiry. And that's part of why I wanted to share it. In terms of how the practice actually functions, how it works, it's really, it's really quite similar to what we've done with the social meta practices. Um, in that we're going to take turns in the first phase of this practice, simply inquiring into the question, what is love? And then we'll take a little pause to let the inquiry settle in, to sink into the question, what is love? And the idea with inquiry, is, as, I, as I understand it, is that we're using the question as the subject of the meditation. So we're becoming, in a sense, you could say, absorbed in the question. Um, and we, we, in a similar way, and this is a description that Trudy Goodman shared with me as I, was spent, as I spent a month on retreat with she and Jack doing inquiry practice. She said, you know, you want to um, drop in the question and then continue looking. And it's, it's a lot like if you've lost your keys or your phone and you're trying to get out the door, 
um, if you remember previous to this year when we most of us were leaving the house more often, uh, but you need to get out of the house, leave somewhere, uh, then you start to look for your keys, right? You look for your phone and you keep looking until you find them. Because if you stop looking, you know, you get distracted and you go, oh, there's this other thing. It's like, oh, no, wait, I got to get to work. So there's, a, I got to keep looking. And it's, it's really that simple in a way. The inquiry is like, we're looking, we're looking, we're looking. Um, except the difference being, we're not going to find the keys. Um, we may find some answers, you know, there may be like an insight or something may occur to us. Um, and that's great. That's actually part of the practice. It's sort of designed to generate insights. Um, but the, the unique thing about inquiry practice is we don't settle for any of the insights while we're practicing. We don't um, set up an enlightened base camp in that one insight and say, okay, I'm going to stay here, you know, and just hang out in this insight. We go, oh, that's cool. What is love? You know, getting curious again, like wondering, like maybe there's something deeper here. Maybe there's, maybe it could be fleshed out more. Maybe you know, maybe there's stuff I don't know. <laughs> and that's essentially what inquiry practice is about. It's about cultivating this mindset of not knowing, of openness, of curiosity, of investigation. Um, and then we just look, what is love? So in the practice, we'll take the first phase of this practice, we'll take turns just saying that aloud, inquiring aloud, what is love? And you can do that however it feels appropriate. And then a little pause in the next person. What is love? Pause, letting the inquiry sink in. What is love? So that's the first part. We'll just do that in small groups of three to four people each. And then in the second phase of this practice, I'd like to come back into the large group all together and work with a more spontaneous mode of this practice. And because this question is pretty short, what is love? We'll, we'll be able to continue working with this question. So when we come back and we're all together, as you feel moved, you can inquire a lot, what is love? Or, and, or you could inquire, what is it? What is it? Uh, whichever of those feels appropriate, you can use either one as you like. Uh, whenever you like, and we'll spend the second half of the practice um, just spontaneously inquiring aloud together. What is love? Or more simply, or more kind of to the to the point of the name of the practice. What is it? And here, just a facilitation note: if you wanted to um, facilitate this and explore something else and do it in a spontaneous way, say you want to explore what is compassionate presence. Maybe that might be a little too long, you know, to do in a spontaneous group with a bunch of people. You could just, you know, you could use this, what is it to serve as a shorthand for the inquiry. And once you get the inquiry going, it's easier to do that because you're already in touch with the spirit of it and it acts as a kind of shorthand. You could even go down even more essentially to what, what. I had a friend who was practicing the Chan tradition. And they had this unique style of inquiry where they'd sit there and he, the way he described it is they sit and they go, what, 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 what? So it's like pumping the inquiry, like bellows. <laughs> more intense, more hyper-masculine approach, not proposing that here, but I'm just saying it can, you could even inquire that way. Um, so there's lots of different ways to inquire. And, and the last thing I'd share is that sometimes people you know, are kind of wondering, like, am I inquiring from my, my head? Am I inquiring from my heart, from my stomach? Like, where is the inquiry rising from? And uh, to which I'd say, yes, uh, yes, you can inquire from any or all of those places. And that's part of the interesting thing. Like, where are we inquiring from in this practice? Where is the question arising from? Um, is there ways that we can get out of a habitual tendency to just inquire from the head, for instance, if that's what you do, uh, or can you, you know, make the inquiry fill up more of your being? Can you inquire with every fiber of your being, every cell asking the question, what is love? So that's um, just another kind of piece that sometimes comes up as a question often comes up. And I just want to offer that as a little bit of a just su suggestion for exploration and see, see what, see what you find there.